Today we'll talk about the revision for experiment 2 and 3 for DK024. For experiment 2, we'll discuss the solubility in water, we'll discuss bromine test, and also we will discuss Bayer test. Let's start with solubility in water. So solubility in water in alkane, your carbon-carbon single bond, that is your saturated hydrocarbon. And also in your alkene, we have the presence of carbon-carbon double bond, which is your unsaturated hydrocarbon. And first and foremost, we will look at the observation in alkene. Observation of alkene in solubility of water is two layers solution form. Observation of alkene in solubility of water also is two layers of solution form. Why there is two layers of solution? The explanation is as below. Alkane and alkene both are insoluble in water because they cannot form hydrogen bond with the water molecule. Bear that in mind, when you say cannot form hydrogen bond, you must also mention the hydrogen bond cannot be formed between who and who. So in this case, it's between alkane, alkene and also your water molecule. Why alkene and alkene cannot form hydrogen bond with the water molecule? Because alkene and alkene are non-polar molecule, while water molecule is polar. Next, let's look at bromine test in the dark. The reagent and condition that we use for the bromine test in the dark is bromine in dichloromethane, bromine in CH2Cl2, the condition is in the dark. The function of this test is to differentiate the unsaturated hydrocarbon, alkene, from the saturated hydrocarbon, alkene. Or, you can use this sentence to identify the presence of carbon-carbon double bond. Both sentences are acceptable in this case. Next. Let's look at the observation of bromine test in alkane. So in alkane, the observation will be the reddish brown color of bromine remain unchanged. While the observation of alkene in this case will be the reddish brown color of bromine decolorized. You can always use the word turn colorless to replace decolorized. They are the same. Make sure you label clearly who is your alkane, who is your alkene, because their observations are different. Next, let's look at the chemical equation for alkene in the bromine test. The alkene means you have all your carbon-carbon single bond over here. Everything is in single bond, that's why you are having a saturated hydrocarbon. When you are in the bromine test, the reddish brown color of bromine remain unchanged because there is no reaction. While the chemical equation of alkene in bromine test is as follow. You have your presence of carbon-carbon double bond. The most important thing is to know where is your carbon-carbon double bond. And what happens is your carbon-carbon double bond will break into single bond and you will have an addition. You will have your Br added, Br added on the carbon that holding the double bond just now. And that is the only changes. According to this chemical equation, what would be the type of reaction for this reaction? The type of reaction is electrophilic addition reaction. It's an addition because you are having Br added into the carbon carbon that holding double bond. It's an electrophilic addition because your Br2 over here is your electrophile. So you are having an electrophilic addition reaction in your bromine test of alkene. Let's look at more example of chemical equation of alkene. Over here, we still focus on the carbon-carbon double bond. 
it doesn't matter how many carbon you are having what important over here is where is your carbon carbon double bond and then your double bond will break into single bond and br added into the carbon that holding the double bond just now so that is the changes in this case, my alkene is a 6-carbon alkene, it's a C6H12. So the only thing that can change is the number of carbon over here. The process will remain the same no matter how many carbon you are having. Next, let's look at Bayer test. Bayer test will be using your KMNO4 OH- coal. We'll be using your alkaline KMnO4 in a cold condition or we are doing it at the room temperature in your lab so you can write room temperature. What is the function of Bayer test? The function of Bayer test is the same as the bromine test. It's used to differentiate the unsaturated hydrocarbon alkene from the saturated hydrocarbon alkene. Similar as your bromine test, you can also use this sentence. We can also use the sentence of to identify the presence of carbon-carbon double bond. Both bring the same meaning to the Bayer test. What would happen when you have a Bayer test in alkene and also alkene? But that in mind, your alkene is your carbon-carbon single bond over here. So you have your carbon-carbon single bond and your alkene, you have your carbon-carbon double bond. Your alkene over here is your saturated hydrocarbon while your alkene is your unsaturated hydrocarbon. What would be the observation of Bayer test in alkene? The observation of Bayer test in alkene is the purple color of KMnO4 remain unchanged while the observation of Bayer test in alkene will be the purple color of KMnO4 decolorized and also brown precipitate form. Just to remind you, the word decolorized can also be replaced by turn colorless. Next, let's look at the chemical equation of alkene in the Bayer test. The chemical equation is as given. You have all your saturated hydrocarbon alkene react with your KMnO4 OH- room temperature. There will be no reaction. That's why the purple color of KMnO4 remain unchanged. While the chemical equation for alkene is you have the presence of your carbon-carbon double bond in your alkene. And what happens when you have your alkaline KMnO4 at room temperature? Your double bond will then become single bond and you have the presence of OH, OH added into the carbon that holding the double bond. And also you have a MnO2 over here and this MnO2 is your brown precipitate. And this arrow going downwards represent precipitate. And that is how we write the chemical equation of alkene and alkene in your Bayer test. Next, let's look at type of reaction. According to the chemical equation given in the Bayer test, you have the presence of carbon-carbon double bond. The double bond will become single bond. And you have your OH added into the carbon that holding double bond just now. So you have a process of addition. What type of addition will this be? The type of reaction is your electrophilic addition reaction. So this is the type of reaction for Bayer test. Next, let's look at more example of alkene over here. I have my alkene carbon-carbon double bond, same thing. The double bond will then break become single bond and added with the 2OH on the carbon that holding the double bond just now, producing your brown precipitate MnO2. And this will be the example of your alkene C6H12. That is your 6-carbon alkene with 12 hydrogen. Again, the number of carbon might be changing, but the chemical equation shall remain the same because we only focus on the carbon-carbon double bond. The only thing that can change is the number of carbon on the side, but we only actually focus on the carbon-carbon double bond. 
That is the most important part. Don't forget that you can also have your alkene in the form of cyclic. You can have your 6-carbon cyclic over here. That is your C6H10. You still have 6-carbon, but right now it's in the form of cyclic. And let's look at the changes. The changes is still happen on your carbon-carbon double bond, becoming your carbon-carbon single bond. And the OH is added into the carbon that holding the double bond just now and still producing your brown precipitate. The entire chemical equation are similar because the process happened at carbon-carbon double bond. The type of reaction is still the same, it's your electrophilic addition reaction. In your experiment 3, reactions of alcohol, we will look at your Lucas test and also we will look at your esterification. In Lucas test, the reagent and condition that we will use is your concentrated hydrochloric acid, zinc chloride, and also heat. Well, the function of the test is to differentiate the classes of alcohol. Or you can write to classify alcohol. They bring the same meanings. In Lucas test, we have different classes of alcohol. We have primary alcohol, we have secondary alcohol, and we have tertiary alcohol. Primary alcohol means that the carbon that holding the OH is a primary carbon. That is your primary alcohol. Secondary alcohol means this carbon that holding the OH will be holding two carbon group. You'll be holding two carbon group. That will be your secondary alcohol. While the tertiary alcohol is the carbon that holding OH is holding another three carbon group. That is your tertiary alcohol. Next, let's look at the observation in Lucas test for a primary alcohol. There will be no cloudy solution form even after 10 minutes of heating. This is a complete sentence that you must have for the observation of your primary alcohol. You must mention the time and also the heating. While in your secondary, you will have your cloudy solution form after 10 minutes of heating. Well, in the secondary, the 10 minutes over here is n not a must. It can be X minutes. What is mean by X minutes over here is it can happen in less than 10 minutes. It can happen in 6 minutes, 7 minutes, or even 5 minutes. Okay? It will depend on what are you doing on that day and what are you getting on that day. So what we insist over here is the time, but not necessarily 10 minutes. Okay, well for the tertiary, is the cloudy solution form immediately. Your tertiary must be forming the cloudy solution immediately. Next, let's look at the chemical equation for the primary, secondary and tertiary alcohol. For the primary alcohol, you can see over here there is no reaction. That's why there will be no cloudy solution form. And you must have the word concentrated in your equation for the HCl because your HCl must be concentrated in here. And this is a primary alcohol because this carbon is a primary carbon, holding only one R group, one carbon group. Next, let's move to secondary. This carbon is a secondary alcohol because you are holding two carbon group, and that's why it's a secondary alcohol. And again, the hydrochloric acid concentrated must be there. You have your zinc chloride and heat in your Lucas test. And you can see the changes is your OH will be substituted by the Cl. And also you will produce H2O. And this alkyl halide, all right, is your cloudy solution. Next, we have tertiary over here. You can see that it's a tertiary because this carbon is holding three R group. You have three carbon group. That's why this carbon is a tertiary and automatically it becomes a tertiary alcohol. And that is the way that we write your Lucas test as always. And the changes is also the same. You have your OH substituted by the Cl and also forming your H2O byproduct. That is how we write the chemical equation for your Lucas test. Let's look at more example of primary alcohol. This is a 4-carbon alcohol over here. 
So I have a four carbon alcohol over here. So the four carbon alcohol for the primary, you must make sure your OH is attached to a primary carbon. And in your primary alcohol, for your Lucas, there will be no reaction. Next, for the secondary alcohol, first and foremost, we must make sure that the carbon that holding the OH is a secondary carbon because it's attached to two carbon group. So this is my secondary alcohol. Reacting with your Lucas concentrated hydrochloric acid with the presence of zinc chloride and heat, you have your OH substituted by the Cl and forming the byproduct H2O. Next, we have your tertiary. Since we only have four carbon, so your tertiary means your carbon that holding the OH must be a tertiary carbon and they are holding three carbon group. So that is your tertiary alcohol. And the chemical equation is similar where you have your OH substituted by the Cl in your Lucas reaction. Don't forget the byproduct of H2O behind here. The byproduct of H2O is to balance the chemical equation. By looking at the secondary and the tertiary alcohol chemical equation, where your OH is substituted by the Cl, the next thing will be, what would be the type of reaction? Since it's a substitution, it will then be your nucleophilic substitution. Why is that nucleophilic substitution? Because the OH is substituted by the Cl minus. And since it's a minus, your Cl minus is a nucleophile. That's why it becomes a nucleophilic substitution reaction for the Lucas test in your secondary alcohol and your tertiary alcohol. Next, let's look at esterification. The reagent and condition in the esterification will be using your ethanol, your acetic acid, your concentrated sulfuric acid, and the heat. The function of the test is to produce ester. And this is not really a test, okay? This is not really a test. It's actually more on a reaction. The function of the reaction is to produce ester. The observation in the esterification will be based on the smell. It will produce a weapon that smells like glues because we are using ethanoic acid and ethanol. That's why you have a smell like glue. And the chemical equation for this esterification where you are using your ethanol and also your ethanoic acid, what happened is the H in the alcohol will be removed. And the carboxylic acid, your ethanoic acid, will remove the OH. And when they combine, you will form a new bond between the O that have the H removed, this O, and also on the carbon that just removed the OH. So the new bond will be formed between the O and the carbon that removed the OH. And that is your ester. And my byproduct over here is H2O. And that's it for the revision of your experiment 2 and 3. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to this channel.